welcome to Lola Basketball. This is usually done like on a phone, so um, I'm, I'm kind of using the phone to show uh, people. Um, our strength and conditioning coach, Tyler Stewart, this is kind of his area here. This is his office. This is his weight room. Um, and I usually tell the, the guys, you know, most of our recruits will actually visit with him separately um, so we can give them more of a, a breakdown about the different machines we have and how we use them and what we do. Um, this is kind of a, a breakfast nutrition area that we use in here. So usually when the guys come in in the mornings we'll have you know some kind of breakfast here for them just to kind of check in on them and stuff uh, they have little vitamin boxes over here where they kind of have their vitamins every morning they sign in they do their stuff um, if they're hungry during the day so they ever need some food we got a bunch of frozen foods in here hot pockets you name it they can warm some stuff up they can get some food for snacks and things like that um, usually well not usually we'll make smoothies at different times so in the mornings when they come in for workouts Tyler will kind of cook them up, uh, make them some smoothies. And then we, we usually keep stuff in here as well during the year, fruit, deli meats, bread, etc. This is kind of like the food area, the, the, the room for them to come in and just kind of get snacks and stuff during the day whenever they need to. Um, so this part of it, Tyler manages. He has a, a master's in nutrition, um, worked at the University of Florida. He's been a great addition to our, our, our program in this way as well. So um, he kind of manages a lot of this space. Is this an all day, um, any day they want kind of thing, or is this? Pretty much, so Tyler time. comes in every morning, so he'll open all this up so they can come in. And women's basketball uses stuff as well. So um, I know that like, women's basketball has areas of fridges and food, so you know they'll put some stuff out here, but most of this stuff is stuff that Tyler set up specifically kind of for our And you guys do breakfast here, or do you guys do breakfast in the company? We usually do it here because guys are coming and going. Yeah. Um, they'll either be going on the way to class, some will work out, so we'll lay it out here if they want to take it with them, they can. Most guys that's, we'll sit here and eat them, and it's just kind of have another in for them. Exactly. For more specific meals. And stuff. Exactly right. Yep, yep. Um, um, usually talk, obviously, at this point, people know what the pit is, but we'll kind of use this picture as a segue to just talk about the pit, its importance. This is obviously a little bit of an older Sports Illustrated article, but you know, still, if you Google and search any kind of recent stuff on arenas, you're gonna find very similar things, just how kind of famous this venue is. Um, so we usually kind of talk about that um, at this, this point of the, the walkthrough. Um, a lot of these remodeling and things that have done were done by a former player named Danny Granger. Um, so it's, you know, this, this area here is kind of named after him. He's obviously one of our uh, most famous basketball alumni and an amazing human being that I've kind of gotten to know as well. Um, this area here is kind of our lounge area for the players. It serves a lot of different purposes in many different ways. These bean bags are sometimes um, guys are going to sleep on during the day when you know between classes and things like that. Um, this wall here I call the wall of truth and it's just usually statistics we kind of put up at different points of the year just so the guys can kind of see where they rank and how they are kind of amongst each other. A lot of guys complain about playing time or this or that and it's, it's my somewhat objective way of being able to show them, hey, this is what's important. And these are some things that were important to us this year. Obviously deflections, rebounding, paint touches, and we actually put GPA up there in the, in the spring just to kind of keep guys uh, academically oriented there um, during a, a, a tough stretch of games and travel and things like that. Um, we've recently added this board right here. Um, this is an NBA board. And these are just kind of Lobo players that will play in the NBA. I put up a question mark just so that we know we're wondering kind of who's next. Um, I've added a library. Books are important to me. Uh, put a, a myriad of books. These are books I've had or donors have given us or anyone. And anybody asks, hey, if you ever have a book you want to give, let us know. We'll, we'll throw them in here. I give a lot out. I'd be lying if I, if I said that they all get read. Uh, very few of them probably get read, but I try. Um, and just kind of have that up. We have clocks in a lot of places just from a... Um, punctuality standpoint. Uh, we are a Nike school, so this is a little bit about our kind of gear on the ground here, of the different gear you would get uh, from this past year if you came here. So we give you kind of some winter jackets and stuff for, for the cold. These are kind of your sweats and your kind of, this is what we would wear on the road. And then we have kind of like training and different shirts. So over the course of the year, this is kind of a little bit about what our guys would get just from a, a gear perspective. We do kind of like some personalized shirts. You can see the process one because 
know, being a process oriented person is, is something to me. We have celebrating Black History Month, so there's different kinds of things you'll, you'll kind of get over the course of the year. We are obviously a night in school, um, and then you have your, your travel sweats and your shorts and your gear um, that way as well. What percentage of this do they get right up front? Um, we actually give it to them staggered over the course of the year. That's always the plan. We don't give them all at once, because usually when they get it all at once, they start giving stuff away, and then they come back and they don't have anything left. So if we give them two or three at a time, they might give one away, and then we'll kind of keep the rest. A lot of these guys send these home to family members and different things like that. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the locker. So this is something I usually kind of walk through. So you can kind of see different parts to it. You'll have like a lower part, which is what I call our dream board or our vision board. So at some point, me and you would sit down and talk about what your goals are, what your fears are, uh, what you want to accomplish, et cetera, et cetera. You can see GPA goals, you can see body fat goals, weight goals, um, pictures um, of family members. You know, this kid really wanted to, his, his parents moved away and he wanted to remember, hey, think about my family, remind myself to reach out to them, say hello, I want to be a better leader by example, things like that. Um, above the lockers, you can kind of see two different things. You can see uh, a family tree. Uh, so each kid kind of at the beginning of the year kind of writes down their family tree that they want to look at every day. And then next to it, I do the, the history of the guys that wore their number. So to me, every day you come in, no matter what kind of day you're having, a good day, a bad day, uh, something in between. And these things to me kind of recenter you for practice, for workouts, for whatever. I'm gonna look at my family chair, I'm gonna remember you know, them. I'm gonna remember who wore my number, the jersey I'm putting on, and then there are my goals. And hopefully that just kind of allows them or, or the individual to kind of have a, a more productive day. Uh, you can't see the countdown. We have a countdown clock up here. So usually this countdown clock will just be who we're playing next, uh, how many days and hours and minutes there are you know, to that game. We haven't scheduled our first game yet, so we're still kind of working on that. And then these are just terms that we use as a staff. These are mostly basketball kind of terms that I'm trying to reinforce to them when I'm not around. Um, take pride in your passing. Never guess body language, first to the floor, hands up and out. These are just terms we use a lot um, over the course of a, a, a practice, a film session, whatever it might be, just to kind of keep, keep reminding you guys. So this is mostly the players area. I don't really come into this area very often. I let them have their time together. Uh, they can talk about me, they can talk about whatever. I think they need to have some private space. So I don't come in here very often. Um, I usually just kind of come in here once in a while if I'm looking for a play or something. Uh, but I don't like to come in and take away their kind of private time to bench or talk or whatever that might be. Uh, most of my time will be spent in our film room. So that's kind of the next room. So this is where we do all our meetings. We watch film. Um, we, we talk on the whiteboard. We do a lot of different things in here. We have guest speakers. This is usually where we'll bring our guest speakers in so they can speak to the guys. It's a much more formal setting um, for me to speak, for them to be a certain way. And it's just kind of our basketball room. So there's not really a ton to, to go into depth. On a real visit, I usually have some video lined up at this point, And we watch some video either about us, maybe the player that we're recruiting. You know, we, we would sit here and watch some film so they could get a bit of an idea of whatever this theme would be. It could be offense, it could be defense. It could be something with our style of play, something with the particular player that we're trying to um, work on or, or emphasize during the recruiting process. So that could be a part of this this part of the tour as well. Do you ever show them like past logos or current logos that for sure see them like? We do, we do, we do that quite a bit. Um, particularly okay. since I've gotten here. Um, I can open up this room for you here. It's really just, a, it's where we eat. I mean, I don't know if it's a huge deal, but this is where we'll eat. Where I showed you before was breakfast, informal stuff. In there is where they sit down and eat more meals, pre-game meals, post-game meals, things like that. This is just a, a general lobby. We share this facility with our women, so this side is gonna be our women. We're obviously gonna be over here on this side. Um, these are some former players. Uh, that will lead you back into the arena right there so you can kind of see everything is, is, is kind of connected. Uh, this will be our practice gym here, so uh, we spend a lot of time in here. Um, again, we share it with our women, but the good thing is we, it's really the only people we have to share it with. So between the pit and here, you can usually get in and shoot on a basket whenever you want, however you want. 
uh, when you guys came into that weight room, there's a punch code. So all the players have a punch code and they can punch their way into this facility. And then they pretty much have access to everything. So. Um, is there a dead period at all that, that this is closed? Can they come at three in the morning if they want it? Technically they could. Um, there is certain centers that I think close down at like 11 o'clock or midnight. Um, I don't know if the outside one does. Um, so again, um, brand new lighting in here. Um, we got it about a year ago, really brightened the place up. Um, we obviously have put our, you know, our players on uh, the men and the women are both here. We actually just brought this out for you guys. We don't have it all out, but these are just some equipments that we use with players. There's obviously a shooting gun on the right, which everybody pretty much has, but that's ours. Uh, this is a ball handling machine. Uh, it's kind of like a computer game, so you get on and you log in with your name and you can do a ball handling machine. Um, there's a few other pieces we don't have out right now. And then this is shot tracker, so you can see some sensors up in the ceiling, and we also have them in the pit as well. And basically when they pick up one of these balls and it's charged, um, they go out, everything they shoot, everything they do is recorded, and we can pull it up and just kind of see what it is they did and how they did it. So right now, if Jeff shot that shot, it would go down. That's on the sport, on the floor. Jeff shot it, and it would go in or it wouldn't, et cetera. So these are just kind of um, balls and, and the technology that we use there as well. Jeff shot that shot. Exactly right. These are our offices down over here. So we were actually in the midst of kind of redoing some stuff um, at the beginning of um, usually seasons and semesters or whatever. We we kind of do these boards and have the guys sign them. This is the one we did here in August. Just the things we really wanted to emphasize this year: uh, being early to things, respecting our body, and then being grateful of the opportunity. Um, you can see a lot of quotes on the walls. These are quotes that most of them are me, but. Other people that have come along, and there's a quote important to them. You can see all the way up and down. There's some there's some different quotes that people have kind of written at different times. Um, I usually take people into my office, not not for uh, an extended period, but my office has a lot of different things in it, different people, stuff that have come from fans or myself or whatever. It's a myriad of stuff. Um, along the top are the players that I've been fortunate enough to coach that are in the NBA. Um, there's different things that have come across in my life that are here. So usually I'll kind of do it. And if someone wants to ask me about something, I, I, I will um, at different times. They do ask about golf clubs. I, I put them here. I'm not golfing until we make the NCAA tournament. So I just leave my golf clubs in here as motivation to realizing okay. I'm not allowed to golf until we make the NCAA tournament. So those are there as a, as a motivation, not as a um, reward for anything quite yet. Um, and that's really about it that's um, there, again, we're, we're just starting to do some stuff in here. So these are going to be family photos that are here. We don't have them all up yet, but each staff member, just to kind of keep talking about our, our families and the people around us. Uh, Brandon does have his up. Dan does have his up. We're still trying to get all these um, kind of going here. <clears throat> and again, you see some other quotes and done by different people and in, in different ways. Um, we usually talk just briefly about our guy Snake here. So he's got his picture as well. We had a speaker come in uh, last year who spoke to our guys and asked them about Nelson Mandela and there was a lot of quiet in the room and then he asked how many people knew who Nelson Mandela was and I think there was two players in the whole team that knew who Nelson Mandela was. So this is a, a print of his um, famous speech from the docks and I figured I'd just put it up so every time they walk by I don't think they're going to sit here and read it but it's just to at least they might know who Nelson Mandela is and, and a little bit more about him. We're just starting this section, so again, this one isn't done either. Um, these are all the 1,000-point scorers um, that are from New Mexico that played for the Lobos. Um, these are players from California and then Australia, and we're going to kind of eventually put different sections together for different kind of important sets of people um, that have come through kind of Lobo basketball. So we just started this section here. Um, and, and hopefully we'll kind of keep building it as we go with just different uh, former Lobos that have kind of come through our, our, our program. Uh, um, this, it was very vague, the, the first African-American basketball players that have come to play for the Lobos. Um, this is actually from Jeff, actually, and I took these different 
journal articles. There was one, but he didn't actually play, and then the next guy came in. So this is just kind of uh, the early start of African-American basketball players coming to play at UNM. Uh, so we, we, we have that up as well. That's the NBA board you saw in the locker room, but unfortunately a lot of people don't get to go to the locker room, so we put one here as well. Um, we do uh, personality testing at the beginning of every year. Just kind of talk, uh, have all the guys fill out. Basically, it, it's a disc assessment. So a disc ass assessment is a pretty popular um, mode of, of questioning to get an idea for people. So basically, this is something we do. We put these up just so we all know a little bit about more about ourselves. Uh, we'll kind of put everyone in groups. Who are the D's? Who are the I's? Who are the C's? Who are the S's? Just so that when everybody acts a certain way, we're a little bit more understanding about how they are. Coaches, players, you know, you name it. So that's that poster that's up there. Um, that's obviously from the Nevada game, just a, a picture we had up. Um, that's another one there. Uh, we have a chess board. We actually have a lot more guys than you'd ever imagine that like to play chess. So we have chess and checkers here for guys that want to play. Uh, usually this fridge is full of kind of snacks or, or fruits or things for people to have while they're here. The TV will be on. This is just kind of a lobby area that we like to make open and friendly uh, to anybody that would want to um, kind of come through. I uh, started this um, when I got here. They had a board that some people had signed, and no one really knew what it was for or what it was about. So I figured I'd put it on a wall and just have former players come in and sign it. I'm a hockey guy. This is in the locker room for the Montreal Canadiens, that, that quote at the top. And it's just about the history of the Canadians when you walk into their locker room. And I just thought it would be cool. So every time a former player comes through, I say, hey, do you mind going over and signing it? And we're just trying to hopefully beef that thing up over time and eventually get as many former Lobos to come sign that thing as we possibly can. Um, on the left, obviously, are our uh, former uh, women's basketball players that have come through here that are, that are great players and uh, uh, the men are on the right. So um, this is kind of a little bit of a random list. There's obviously a lot of great players that have come through here and in time I hope to add to this. Um, it's mostly NBA oriented, but we did kind of add other players that weren't in the NBA. So hopefully in time we'll get a little bit more broadened with who these guys are. But these are obviously great local basketball players that have, that have come through here and done great things here and then obviously done and, and great things even beyond here. So the, this arena obviously is called the pit because it's built down into the ground. Um, so obviously we're up here at ground level and uh, using all these different facilities. But obviously for the game, uh, our players would go down to the court and uh, go down to the ramp and, and go down even to the mid, what we call the mid-ramp area. So game days and every time we go to the pit, this would be the way you would come to, to get down there. Um, we on game days don't use the locker room up here just because of all this traffic getting up and down, I thought that was a little bit of a waste of time and even just a waste of a little bit of energy as well. So um, we started using a locker room here at the mid ramp uh, for pregame and, and, and halftime. So prior to the game, um, you know, you might be upstairs kind of getting ready, but eventually you'd come down here and we use a locker room down here where we'll have everything set up uh, with your uniform, your jerseys. Um, and then pregame, this is where we'll meet to go over the scouting report, talk about who we're playing, what we're going to do, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, this is the locker room that we use for that. Um, usually, we'll have a, a, some film going, and again, on a regular visit, this might be another opportunity for us to do another film session, just to break up the monotony. Hey, here's this, as you can watch it. They can watch that a little bit. There's the whiteboard, and here is where we'll talk a little bit about jerseys on a real visit. Uh, this is when kids would actually try these on and take pictures and we would have like a backdrop and things like that So we would do all that on like a real visit on um, this visit these kind of virtual ones We just kind of walk them around a little bit um, so they can kind of see things and um, uh, So those are the different jerseys we wear I'll give them a little bit of kind of a history on 
the different ones and why we wear them, the turquoise and the yellow, obviously the other ones are, are, are school colors. So, um, and then talk a little bit about different shoes we have and make it interactive if they ask what kind of shoes and things like that. Um, and that's pretty much it. So at this point, I would walk them and say, hey, here's the, we walk down the ramp, we get them onto the court, we play a highlight video, um, and we kind of wrap it up that way. That, that's kind of how we, uh, we normally do it. I don't know if you want to do uh, that part as well, but at this point, it's a hey. Um, sure. This is, you know, I, I, I've, I've walked out of this door. I tell this because I've walked out of this door and I've seen opposing players with a camera FaceTiming family members going, look at this, look at this. Like, it's a really cool deal to play in the pit, to be able to walk down the ramp um, and, and basically play in, a, in an amazing arena. Um, it's basically the most iconic facility probably in our state and is a big deal to a lot of people, not only here in Albuquerque, but around all of college basketball. Uh, Jim Balbano's obviously won the Final Four game here. Uh, there's been a lot of fantastic games and, and the, the, the reputation of the pit is electric in a lot of different ways. We're all just really blessed to play in front of it. And obviously for a recruit, the opportunity to kind of come play here would be terrific as well. So the only thing you're not going to get is all the pomp and circumstance with lights and highlight videos and things like that. Uh, but usually we'll kind of walk them down and kind of just scroll around and they can kind of watch all that kind of stuff too. So. <clears throat> So yeah, so we'll, we'll talk obviously about the pit, um, attendance, um, our benches here. Usually the highlight video is playing the whole time, so I don't do a ton of talking down here. This is kind of the climax of the video. We'll probably close it up. Hey, thanks so much. Uh, really want you to play here one day, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and just kind of cap it out from there. And then the tour is kind of done. That, that's kind of how we've been doing it so 